start uh, our uh, program uh, as we typically do uh, with a uh, invocation uh, and the Pledge of Allegiance uh, uh, to the flag. Uh, the invocation uh, will be given to, uh, by uh, Pastor uh, Richard Hunt, Minister Richard Hunt, uh, and uh, if he will come forward at this time to the podium and then we'll be led in the Pledge of Allegiance uh, by three outstanding uh, students whom I will introduce uh, momentarily. Would you please stand as you are able uh, for the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Let us pray. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we come to you tonight, God. We pause to say thank you for another day. Thank you for your grace and your mercy that you've shown toward us. We pray now for every person that is in this room tonight under the sound of my voice. I pray a special blessing upon our mayor and our commissioners. We ask you to bless each and every elected official. And we lift them up before you tonight. God, we pray that you will bless this meeting and that you will rule and abide in the midst. We give you glory and honor for all things. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please join the pledge along with us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Be seated. Uh, as I said, our, our uh, invocation was given by Minister Richard Hunt, uh, Minister Hunt is with, at Macedonia and, and is an assistant pastor, Eddie D. Smith, and we appreciate you being here tonight. I understand that also Minister Hunt is the son of Sarah Hunt. Is that right? And that there's another distinction, and I think Ms. Hunt is, is also here with us or was at the earlier uh, uh, meeting. Uh, we were led tonight in the Pledge of Allegiance by three outstanding um, Bibb County uh, school students. Uh, uh, first uh, is uh, Golden Bell. Golden, would you stand up for us so we can see you? Golden is an 11th grader at Central High School where she's active in cheerleading and will serve as cheer captain for the next year. She attended Vineville Academy, Miller Middle School. She's an AB honor roll student involved in the Beta Club, the DECA, FBLA, and Fellowship of Christian Athletes. She also created a club at her school called Let's Talk About It that encourages students who don't feel like they have enough emotional support at home or in life to talk with their peers. That's Golden Bell. Second, uh, Jabriel Lott. Jabriel, would you, there you, there you go. Jabriel Lott is a junior at Central High School, a vice president of the Glee Club and a member of the Sugar Bear Band Auxiliary. She loves to sign, to write, and spend time with her friends and family. Jabriel is a member of the Great Elizabeth Baptist Church where she is actively involved in her church. She is a rising senior, plans to attend Columbus State University or Tuskegee University for Music uh, after high school. Jaber, thank you for being here. Uh, and finally, uh, Ashley Goodwin. Uh, Ashley? Ashley Goodwin is a junior at Central High School, enrolled in the fine arts program where she plays in the orchestra. In her free time, she enjoys playing instruments and singing. One of her goals is to become a neurosurgeon or a neuroscientist. Ashley often hears people say, quote, there's nothing else we can do, unquote. But she wants to be the one to change that phrase in the medical field. There's always something else. So, Ashley, thank you for being here. And to all three of you, uh, congratulations to you. We so often, we, we, we so often hear all this bad stuff about our youth today, just, you know, sorry, good for nothing, ain't doing nothing. And then you see these fine examples of young people, and we appreciate you all being here. Good luck with your studies and in the future, and thank you again uh, for being here. Uh, next order of business uh, for us is the approval of minutes. We have three sets of minutes uh, that have been prepared. Uh, the minutes of our pre-commission meeting uh, that was held on May the 1st. Our regular uh, commission meeting held later that same night, May the 1st, have been prepared. And then there were minutes of the public hearing uh, that was held on May the 10th um, uh, out at uh, Anthony Road uh, concerning the transfer of the uh, Tom Fontaine Little League Complex, transferring ownership of that from Macon Bibb County to the 
Bibb County Board of Education uh, for the, uh, the meeting was held at the elementary school adjacent to, to the property and we reviewed those minutes as well. Are there any changes or corrections to any of the three sets of minutes or additions? If not, can I get a motion to approve those three sets of minutes by Schlesinger's motion? Second by Shepard, further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the approval of those three sets of minutes signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it, and those three uh, uh, sets of minutes are approved. Uh, next, we've got uh, some invited guests uh, that we want to uh, recognize uh, tonight, and I actually want to come down to the podium and read a proclamation. So let me ask uh, anybody that is here for Public Works a Week uh, to please come down and join me uh, at the uh, podium. I am absolutely delighted to issue this proclamation uh, tonight and to read it in its entirety um, because so often we take uh, uh, the service of these fine people for granted. We, we expect it and come to uh, uh, think it all, always ought to be there, but we often lose sight of who it is that does the hard work uh, to make things happen. And this proclamation reads as follows. Whereas Public works services provided in our community are an integral part of our citizens' everyday lives. And whereas the support of an understanding and informed citizenry is vital to the efficient operation of public works systems and programs such as parks, sewers, streets and highways, public buildings and solid waste collection, and whereas the quality and effectiveness of these facilities as well as their planning, design and construction is vitally dependent upon the efforts and skill of public works employees and officials. Whereas the health, safety, and comfort of this community greatly depends on these people and services, and whereas the efficiency of the qualified and dedicated personnel who staff public works departments is materially influenced by the people's attitude and understanding of the importance of the work they perform, now, therefore, I, Robert A. B. Rickert, Mayor of Macon Bibb County, do hereby proclaim the week of May the 20th through the 26th, 2018, is National Public Works Week in Macon Bibb County with a theme of the power of public works. And I call upon all citizens and civic organizations to recognize the contributions which public works officials make every day to our health, safety, comfort, and quality of life. In witness whereof I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the consolidated government to be affixed this 15th day of May. Uh, Marvin Land, I'd like to uh, give this to you, uh, and, and, and along with my sincere appreciation for everything that you and your department does, but also Sam Kitchens and Parks and Beautification and everything that uh, they do, and Kevin Barkley uh, and his department for all they do in solid waste collection. We couldn't get by without you. I think you deserve a round of applause, not just during this week, but every day of the year. Thank you for what you do. Just to echo what the mayor said, it, it takes more than just public works, it's solid waste, parts of beautification, and all other departments who lend a hand. So I accept this greatly on their behalf and my employees. Thank you.
Uh, next, I do not have a proclamation, uh, but I'd like to ask our IT director and his staff to come join me at the podium. On Tuesday, May the 1st, Macon Bibb County Government's Information Technology Department, Macon Bibb Information Technology, was recognized by the Georgia Chapter of Government Management Information Sciences, GMIS, Georgia Management Information Sciences, by receiving two uh, out of three annual awards offered for commitment to professionalism, leadership, and community engagement uh, in Georgia. GMIS is an international professional association of government technology leaders dedicated to providing professional development, training, conferences, awards, and networking while offering leadership through advocacy, re research, and shared experiences. Several uh, Macon Bibb Information Technology employees have completed or are currently enrolled in GMIS training programs such as the Certified Government Chief Information Officer Program, the Local Government Chief Information Officer Program, and the GEEK Track, <laughs> a technical training program. <laughs> in 2018, Macon Bibb Information Technology initiated an open data project designed to make Macon Bibb County government's applications, information, and web services easily accessible by other departments, businesses, and in the community. The result was something called Macon Insights, and you can find it by going to www.makininsights.com, a website that illustrates the strategic investments by Macon Bibb County government to our citizens and the community. Uh, Macon Insights is funded solely by the budget allocation for Macon Bibb uh, Information Technology using existing resources. Macon Insights has already reduced employee hours previously devoted to information requests. Cost savings also are being steadily realized by employing technologies like automated routing and near real-time information updates between departments and outside organizations. Additionally, uh, self-service web applications allow citizens, businesses, and developers to find information and access services on their schedule in the manner that suits them best. For its commitment to collaborative teamwork and exemplary citizen service, demonstrated by making insights, making Bibb County government received the Georgia GMIS Project of the Year Award. And Joe, you've got that that you're holding out there. The award was accepted on behalf of making Bibb County uh, by Joe Nebhan, MBIT GIS Specialist. Subsequently, making insights has been nominated by the Georgia GMIS for the GMIS International G2 Award. And we're still waiting to see if we how we place on that. So good luck with that. Additionally, Macon Bibb County uh, Government Chief Information Officer Brett Lavender was nominated and received the Spirit of GM GMIS Georgia 2018 Award. This award is presented uh, to IT professionals who have demonstrated leadership in the Georgia local government IT community, encouraged collaboration between public, private, and educational institutions across Georgia, partnered with regional and state organizations to improve government technology solutions in Macon, Bibb County, and throughout Georgia. As a recipient of the Spirit of GMIS Award, Brett has been nominated for the GMIS International Herschel Strickland Award. I just wanted to add a word of congratulations to you and your staff. What a wonderful job you do at IT. Thank you for all your hard work down there. Congratulations on receiving two out of three awards uh, at, this, at this annual convention. I'm proud of you. Anything you'd like to say? Well, I'll, I'll just say two things real quick. One is it was a surprise when I won the Spirit of Jemus Award. And the second thing is it was no surprise when we won the Project of the Year because I've seen firsthand the hard work that's gone in with Jeff Griffin and Joe and they've worked tirelessly, and they're not done yet. So you'll see, you'll see a lot more to come from them. And that's all. Thank you. Next, for a very special uh, recognition, uh, let me call on Mayor Pro Tem Tillman, 
Uh, may I approach him? Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Commission. Uh, I would like to invite up uh, Steve Sago and his Cox Communications team, along with uh, Principal Stephen Jones and uh, Gabriel Miles is a mentor. And uh, Gabriel Miles, please, if you'll join me. Uh, Cox Communication, uh, Mr. Mayor and Commission, uh, does an annual uh, Cox uh, Cable Inspirational Student Hero Recognition Award. And there are so many students that they recognize would just break your heart if you just knew all the adversities that they go through from chemo to having cancer. There's so many things. And this young man I attended this event just really touched uh, my heart. And I asked Dan, could I recognize him at uh, Making Bib Commission? And he said, yes, uh, we all want to be there because we want to ensure that Miles get the true uh, guidance and um, just fortitude to push him along. So this is what we want to do for you, Miles. Uh, Gabriel Miles, a senior at Northeast uh, High School, is preparing to graduate on uh, May 26, 2018, and he will be the first in his family to graduate high school. And whereas Mr. Miles has overcome hurdles and hardship that many wouldn't understand or have to face, including moving from place to place, living in a hotel, and serving a sentence in the RYDC Youth Detention uh, Center. And whereas Mr. Miles is blessed with a supportive family that, uh, that made sure no matter their living condition, he would understand the importance of education and that he had transportation to get to school, including regular attendance on Saturday school to make sure he completed his work. And whereas Mr. Mile has used his troubles to, his, his troubles he faced and, and the major accomplishments just ahead of him to talk with other students about priorities, setting goals, uh, good life strategies, and finding people that love and support them. And whereas Mr. Mile has two favorite quotes he says, help keep him focused. Hakuna Matata, it means no worries for the rest of your days from the Disney Lion King because he says he can't be worried about the past because his future is so bright. And never quit, never back down from WWE wrestler John Cena because he says he will never quit and he will always move forward. Whereas Mr. Meyer was recently honored by Cox Communication with an Inspirational Student Hero Recognition Award as someone who has shown great fortitude by successfully adopting two and or conquering personal problems, challenges, or situation. Now, therefore, I, Mayor, uh, I Robert A.B. Ricker, and Commission do hereby proclaim Tuesday, May 22nd, 2018, as Miles Gabriel Day in the city of Macon Bibb, and I ask that all the people celebrate uh, all the accomplishments that he has earned in spite of so many challenges and hurdles placed in front of him and to celebrate his family and helping him uh, push forward with an education. Miles, uh, I'm a wrestling fan just like you. And you said, when I heard you say that John Cena was a favorite wrestler, uh, we could not raise the $25,000 to get him here, but he <laughs> said, but he sent you his gear, never quit gear, <laughs> and he also sent you Miles. He also sent you his shirt. Hey. Never give up. So this is for you, buddy. And you never give up, and you've got so many folks behind you that every time you think about quitting, don't. Here you go, man. And I will ask Dan uh, Sagal to uh, share some words. As Sagal, I'm sorry, Slagle, I'm sorry. Thank you, uh, Mayor, Commissioners, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, in the Bibb County Public School Systems, if you're academically or athletically advanced, um, there's plenty of recognition for you. 
What's great about the Cox Inspirational Hero Awards is we challenge our principals of all our schools in Bibb County and our teachers to put forth students that have overcome any type of extraordinary obstacles. And I would invite all of you to come to next year's event. Uh, Commissioner Tillman came this year, and of all the award winners we had, Gabriel captured the hearts of everybody. He's, his attitude is unbelievable, and he touched everybody's hearts. I'm thrilled, along with our market leader, Bonnie, to be here, and congratulations, buddy. We love you, and we're awful proud of you, so congratulations, and thank you guys for this. Congratulations, my We're proud of you. Uh, next item on our agenda uh, are public comments uh, on agenda items. Uh, these are comments from the public uh, on items that are on the agenda for action tonight so that we have an opportunity to hear from you before we vote. Uh, there are two people that have signed up uh, to talk about an agenda item, and the first is Linda K. Nally. Uh, who wants to talk to us about uh, the ordinance to appropriate additional funds for uh, outside legal counsel. Ms. McNally, are you here? You're recognized for five minutes at, at the podium, please, ma'am. And just pull that microphone down to adjust so that we can hear you. Good. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We dutifully assemble to demonstrate a false pretense of parliamentary procedure in Macon Bibb County government administration to satisfy legal notice requirement of proposed county budget. There will be no positive outcome reached or sensible reform process achieved because our dire ethical and economic crisis was intentionally created and cleverly sustained by design. Elected officials have silently sabotaged laws and regulations, safeguarding institutional government, and secretly adopted new ordinances to legalize confiscation, manipulation, accommodation, domination, and ultimate ruination. Ordinance such as an ordinance to appropriate 400000 from fund balance for professional services outside council in the county attorney's office. 400000 represents real estate taxes paid by 100 taxpayers such as myself each year who are assessed 4,000 in real estate taxes. Another order, ordinance that I'm speaking about is one that enables Macon Bibb County government employer to contribute up to 50% of an employee's qualified earnings toward his or her pension fund. I have been a conscientious Macon Bibb County taxpayer since year 2002 when accounting discrepancies and illusions were observed in proposed slash adopted slash and actual Bibb County budgets beginning in year, year 2010, I addressed the Board of Commission and declared my refusal to accept personal consequences of intentional acts committed by politicians without conscience. Since then, I have exposed and opposed unfair governing policies and accounting practices detrimental to the moral foundation of a political system and which blatantly disregard the best interest of taxpayers. My chronicled personal opinions and remedial recommendations may be accessed via the website taxpayerfirst.net. 
sufficient funding for essential government services exist without increasing tax rates. Insufficient funding for a mun municipal debt service beyond legal limits, exorbitant Macon Bibb County government employment benefits, post-employment benefits far richer than national average, and economic development enticements threaten to bankrupt Macon Bibb County. Macon Bibb County Net Tax Digest is compromised due to the large percentage of tax ex exempt parcels. Economic development incentives given away to private corporations as a business inducement have proven to burden rather than benefit Macon Bibb County. Poverty is perpetuated. Violent crime and property crime statistics have become cliches. Rumors of an open securities fraud investigation of pension fund administration, collusion, and public corruption abound. If taxpayers, stakeholders are honestly informed about the financial condition of Macon Bibb County, a mass exodus of population and capital will occur. Construction of the Macon Bypass Highway was prophetic and an omen to avoid becoming a hostage of a political system without absolute principles, practices, and precautions. Your time is up. I seek to, I seek justice to correct systems and structures that marginalize taxpayers and cause intentional catastrophic loss of private property through inflation. I will continue to boldly stand up and speak out for political reform in Macon Bibb County until competent, constrained public servants, not masters, effectively govern our community. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much for your comments. We appreciate you being here tonight. Uh, second, uh, Ms. Valerie Wynn wants to talk to us about item seven, the, the report from operations and finance. Ms. Wynn. Thank you, Mr. You're, Mayor. You're recognized. Uh, by this time, you know who Valerie Wynn is. By this time, you know that I'm interested in our community and what goes on in our community. And by this time, you know that I'm running to, to be seated on this commission board to have a voice on the budget. Tonight, I want to just talk to you about a piece of the budget came out in Operations and Finance Committee meeting and just talk to you about the specific piece I want to talk to you, the specific piece I want to talk to you about are uh, the salaries, the uh, pension plan, and health plan. And then a little bit about the um, outside agencies. First of all, Macon still has an, a pension plan for their employees, commissioners. Pension plans are a way of the past. I worked in the insurance industry and the private industry for 45 years. Only the very first company I worked for for 15 years had a retirement pension plan. Every large company I've worked for since then, and large means Travelers Insurance, Prudential, Farmers Insurance, Geico, have no pension plans anymore. That's just a thing of the past. You say, well, our employees have their money in pension plans. The employees that have employees and retirees that currently have money in pension plans will not lose that. But what needs to be considered is a replacement of the pension plan for a 401k. And that's been in, in, in mentioned a couple times, and I'm glad to hear that it's finally being mentioned because it is a way of the times. This way, the people of this community, the people of the employees of this city will be able to determine how much they want to contribute, that's not my buzzer yet, is it, Mayor? <laughs> how much they want to contribute and how much they want to save for their own future. That money would be portable if they left the city or the county. Well, it's one now. I'm going to call it city, okay, if that's okay. They would all, and, that, and the city could also contribute anywhere from 1% to 3% towards that. That would be a savings of money immediately. Now let's look at health care. That's just a small thing we can do, by the way. Health care, there's a lot of things we can do, and I know things have always been uh, bid out for, for rebid re out for to see what we can do about that. We need to consider raising deductibles, raising co-pays. We need to consider things like HSAs, health service, health savings accounts. Other companies do that. The private companies I work for did those things. 
We need to consider those things. We, uh, we also need to look at the stop loss amount of 300000 to see if that amount can be decreased to 200000 or 100000 without raising the premium, premium too high. If we do that, we can save money to the city too because we're paying a lot of money. We had a lot of cat losses. I call them cat losses, but the catastrophe losses in the medical area. So bringing down the amount the city has to pay towards those losses would be beneficial to our budget. Then I want to talk a little bit about outside agencies. We didn't get to talk about that in the committee meeting that I attended to tonight, but I want to just talk about this t to you. I want to show you something, commissioners. This says $2.05 $2 per meal, and it's from the rescue mission. I bet you all get one of these in the mail. And it says they're asking us, they're asking me in the community that for, for a donation for the meals. Uh, they also send me a thing called the Matching Challenge for 2018. They got a $25,000 anonymous donation to the Rescue middle, Mission of Middle Georgia, and they're asking the community to help make up the rest of those funds. $20 for me is nothing, and I think $20 for most of us that can. This, you know, is, is nothing. Most of the people in Bibb County are, have, a lot of people in the Bibb County have wealth, and a lot of people are generous. Even the people that don't have wealth are generous. They'll give 10, 20, 20, 35 dollars to something like this. What I'm saying by this is the rescue mission is getting their own funds. I got another thing in the mail from Magnolia Manor. I may be there. I may be there soon, so I want you to listen. Um, they're asking for donors to give money. And the last thing I want to read to you real quick, okay? You saw this in the paper. 50 years on, loaves and fishes provides more than clothes. They get their funding from churches, individuals, and the community to operate, not from the city of Macon. None of these are on the, the list of um, outside agencies that the city helps fund. So what I'm saying, I said to y'all a few weeks ago, I said it twice, we've been giving fish to these people. We need to give, him their, give them their fishing pole to fish for their own funds. That's what that's what Magnolia Manor does. That's what the rescue mission does. That's what Loaves and Fishes does. We need to get away from that. I'm not even sure that it's legal for us to use our taxpayers' money for things like that. That's supposed to be to run the government. Okay, I hear time's up. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you, I'll be back. Thank you, Ms. Wynn. We appreciate, appreciate you being here. Uh, next on our agenda, uh, reports from our standing committees, and uh, first is the report from Operations and Finance. Uh, that report will be given to us uh, by Chairman Watkins. Uh, Chairman Watkins? Thank you, sir. The committee met on May the 8th, 2018, and took the following actions. The committee approved the following splash project expenditures. A professional consultant services agreement with MYD Golf LLC in an amount not to exceed $90,000 for design services at Bowden Golf Course. Three agreements with Georgia Power Company in the aggregate amount of $305,869 to pay for expenses associated with the relocation of utility poles along Jeffersonville Road. An agreement with Musco Sports Lighting LLC in the amount of $229,000 for lighting to be installed at the South Bibb Recreation Center. An agreement with Middle Georgia Outdoor Lighting Inc. in the amount of $90,000 for the services related to installation of Musco's lighting equipment at the South Bibb Recreation Center. The committee approved the following agreements and contracts. A purchase order with Dell Computer Corporation in the amount of $68,133 for data storage clusters to be housed in the Macon Bib Emergency Operations Centers to be paid from the IT Capital Improvement Budget. The committee accepted a Criminal Justice Coordinating Council 2017 Violence Against Women Act allocation for $50,000 requiring a matching fund of $16,667 to the Solicitor General and a grant from the Community Foundation of Central Georgia in the amount of $5,000 to be used by the Bibb County Sheriff's Officers for CHAMPS educational programs for fifth graders during the 2018 and 2019 school year. The committee also approved a $400,000 appropriation from fund balance for professional services outside counsel in the county attorney's office. 
The committee also approved changing the admission fees to the gated parks at Lake Tobasaki and allowing a water park pass for $30. This concludes the Operations and Finance Committee report. Uh, thank you, Chairman Watkins. Uh, I appreciate that report. Next is Economic and Community Development uh, Committee, and that report will be given to us by Vice Chairman Schlesinger. Vice Chairman Schlesinger. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. The Economic and Community Development Committee met on May the 8th, 2018, and made the following appointments. Commissioner and Economic Community Development Committee Chair Elaine Lucas was appointed to the Pension Trustee Board of the Macon Bibb County Pension Plan. And Nikki T. Randall was appointed to the Macon Bibb County Industrial Authority. And this concludes my report. Uh, thank you, Vice Chairman Schlesinger. I understand there's no report from public safety. Uh, that takes us then to facilities and engineering, and that report will be given to us uh, by uh, Chairman Watkins. Chairman Watkins? The Facilities and Engineering Committee met on May 8, 2018. The committee approved conveying the paved parking lot at 412 New Street to the Urban Development Authority for the purposes of providing for the lease of said property for parking to support the development of properties located in the Central Business District of Macon, including 682 Cherry Street. This completes the report from Facilities and Engineering. Uh, uh, thank you, Chairman Watkins. Uh, that brings us now to the consent agenda. Uh, there are six uh, applications for alcohol beverage licenses uh, that were uh, considered earlier this evening at the Committee of the Whole. Each of these license applications is accompanied by the requisite items that have to be provided. One. Uh, from the sheriff's report, a satisfactory background check uh, of the uh, applicant. Uh, uh, second, um, the, a business services certification that the appropriate license fees have been paid. Uh, a zoning uh, compliance form from the Macon Bibb County Planning and Zoning uh, Commission. Uh, a certification uh, from the county engineer that all distance requirements uh, are have been met and a copy of the ad that ran in the Macon Telegraph uh, to advise people of the application. Each of these applications uh, is accompanied by all of that documentation. Uh, the first uh, uh, application uh, is uh, by uh, Prav Pravin Kumar, uh, Patel, uh, the business name is Tobasovsky Lake Store. It's located at 6024 Mosley Dixon Road, and it is for beer and wine packaged sales to go at that location. Uh, the second is Belinda Sue Calloway. The business name is BC Express Mart, LLC. It's at 6999 Knoxville Road uh, in Lizella. Uh, it is for beer and wine package sales to go uh, at that location. Uh, the third uh, application is um, from Benjamin Clary, and it is the business name Clary Gas Incorporated. It's located at 1290 uh, Gray Highway and is for beer and wine package sales to go uh, from that location. Uh, the fourth application is from Anna Hernandez, the business name is Jafari Group, LLC. They are located at 1286 Anthony Road, and this is for beer and wine package sales uh, to go from that location. Uh, the fifth is from J. Men Patel. The business name is JMP Food Mart at 2031 Sherling Drive, and that is for beer and wine package sales to go from that location. And the final uh, license application is also from uh, J. Men Patel. This time the business name is Houston Food Mart, located at 5642 Houston Road. And it's for beer and wine package sales to go from that location. The committee, the whole, uh, reviewed these and recommends that the licenses um, be uh, issued as requested. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the issuance of those licenses uh, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it, and those six licenses will be issued as requested. Um, that brings us next uh, then to old business. Um, and the first item uh, of old business um, is the appointment to one of our 
pension oversight boards, uh, and I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. A resolution of the macon Bibb County Commission to approve the mayor's appointment of Commissioner Elaine H. Lucas to the Pension Trustees Board of the macon Bibb County Pension Plan and for other lawful purposes. The Economic and Community Development Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it and the resolution is adopted. Uh, item B is an appointment to the Industrial Authority and I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. A resolution of the macon Bibb County Commission to approve Mayor Robert A. B. Rickard's appointment of Nikki T. Randall to the macon Bibb County Industrial Authority to complete the unexpired term of Clifford Whitby and for other lawful purposes. The Economic and Community Development Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Commissioner Lucas, I have your light. Thank you. I just want to say I'm very pleased to see that there are more females being nominated to these boards and authorities. Certainly females make up a majority of the population and, sh and are not represented in the numbers that they should be. So I'm happy to see that. I appreciate the, um, uh, my fellow commissioners voting for me to go on the um, make a bib uh, pension plan. Uh, there was also another nomination that female. She, she, with, with, it was withdrawn because she found out that her bo her board meeting conflicted, or a board meeting conflicted with <laughs> the land bank authorities' board meeting, and she didn't feel like she could do that. So but she, she but I think, uh, Mr. Mayor, I've criticized you in the past for just nominating men all the time, but I have to compliment you now for uh, when you're doing it right. You're nomin you're going in the right direction. <laughs> thank, thank so you. Thank I you know you Lucas. feel good about <laughs> my compliment. But I do want to remind everybody that this community is majority black, both the city and county. And these boards and authorities should reflect the population of this community. There's a growing Hispanic population. And I've already mentioned the um, uh, female a majority population in this community. So I look forward to more uh, nominations of very qualified people to these different boards and authorities. Authorities, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank, thank you, Commissioner Lucas. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it and the resolution is adopted. Thank you very much, Nikki, for your willingness to serve. We appreciate it. Look forward to working with you. Item C is a, is a resolution to approve some additional funds for My D Golf at the Bowden Golf Course, and I'll ask the clerk to read that by a caption. A resolution of the macon Bibb County Commission authorizing the mayor to execute a professional consulting services agreement with My D Golf LLC in an amount not to exceed the total of $90,000, an additional $45,000 for design services for the Bowden Golf Course to be paid by 2018's FLOSS funds and for other lawful purposes. The Operations and Finance Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Uh, next uh, is an, uh, a resolution to uh, authorize payment uh, for relocation of utility poles along Jeffersonville Road. And I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. A resolution of the macon Bibb County Commission to authorize the mayor to execute three agreements with Georgia Power Company in the aggregate amount of $305,869 and to pay other associated expenses for the relocation of utility poles along Jeffersonville Road to be paid from 2017's Floss Bond proceeds and for other lawful purposes. The Operations and Finance Committee recommends approval. Uh, is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it and the resolution is adopted. Uh, next uh, is a resolution uh, for some lighting uh, at the South Bibb Recreation Center. And I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. A resolution of the macon Bibb County Commission authorizing the mayor to execute an agreement with Musco Sports Lighting LLC in the amount of $229,000 for lighting to be installed at the South Bibb Recreation Center to be paid from 2018's plus proceeds 
and for other lawful purposes. Operations and Finance Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it and the resolution is adopted. Uh, item F is a companion uh, resolution to pay for the installation of the lights we just bought. So I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. A resolution of the Maconville County Commission authorizing the mayor to execute an agreement with Middle Georgia Outdoor Lighting Inc. in the amount of $90,650 for services related to the installation of the Musco Lighting Equipment at South Bibb Recreation Center to be paid by 2018's Floss Bond proceeds and for other lawful purposes. Operations and Finance Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it and the resolution is adopted. Uh, next is a resolution uh, to authorize the execution of an agreement with Dell Computer Corporation for uh, data storage and I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. A resolution of the Macon Bibb County Commission authorizing the mayor to execute a purchase order with Dell Computer Corporation in the amount of $68,133 for a data storage cluster to be housed in Macon Bibb County Emergency Operations Center to be paid from IT's capital improvement budget and for other lawful purposes. The Operations and Finance Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it and the resolution is adopted. Uh, uh, next uh, is a, a grant uh, to, that we accept with the requirement of a match uh, for violence against women. Uh, and I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. A resolution of the Macon Bibb County Commission authorizing the acceptance of a Criminal Justice Coordinating Council 2017 Violence Against Women Act allocation in the amount of $50,000 requiring a matching fund amount of $16,667 to the Bibb County Solicitor General in substantially the same form as attached hereto as Exhibit A and for other lawful purposes. Operations and Finance Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it and the resolution is adopted. Uh, next is a, a grant uh, for the Sheriff's Office and the CHAMPS program, and I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. A resolution of the Macon Bibb County Commission authorizing the acceptance of a grant from the Community Foundation of Central Georgia, Inc. in the amount of $5,000 to be used by the Bibb County Sheriff's Office for CHAMPS educational programs for fifth graders during the 2018-2019 school year and for other lawful purposes. The Operations and Finance Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. The next is an ordinance to appropriate additional funds to the county attorney's office for outside council expense, and I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. An ordinance of the Macon Bibb County Commission to appropriate $400,000 from fund balance for professional services outside council in the county attorney's office and for other purposes. The Operations and Finance Committee recommends approval. Uh, is there further discussion? Mr. Watkins? Uh, for the committee members not present, um, I just wanted to explain this a little bit. I know it looks like a large, well it is a large sum of money, but these are costs that we're incurring due to uh, the county defending itself against lawsuits. For various reasons, we're in a lot of litigation, more so than we have been in the past. And these are the costs that we're incurring defending ourselves. Not defending ourselves would be more expensive because, or not getting qualified counsel to help us defend ourselves could possibly be more expensive if we lose some of these suits, so thank you. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Watkins. Appreciate that uh, comment. I is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the ordinance signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it and the ordinance is adopted. Uh, next is uh, item uh, K, uh, which is a resolution to transfer a parking lot to the Urban Development Authority uh, for use by the downtown, in the downtown central business district. And I'll ask the clerk uh, to read that by caption. 
a resolution of the Maconville County Commission to authorize the mayor to convey the paved parking lot at 412 New Street to the Maconville County Urban Development Authority for purposes of providing for the lease of said property for parking to support the development of properties located in the Central Business District of Macon, including 682 Cherry Street and for other purposes. The Facilities and Engineering Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. Got one no, the, the ayes have it, the resolution is adopted. Uh, finally, we have a committee of the whole amendment uh, to a resolution uh, provide, uh, for uh, in parking fees at Lake Tobosofsky, and I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. A resolution of the Maconville County Commission to establish new regulations governing the Lake Tobosofsky recreation areas <coughs> related to parking entrance fees, boat launch fees, and facility rental fees, and to provide a water park only summer parking pass for users of the water park who have purchased season passes and for other lawful purposes. Uh, the committee of the whole uh, recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the committee of the whole amendment uh, to the resolution signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it and the committee of the whole amendment to the resolution is adopted. Uh, that brings us now to new business, uh, but unfortunately there is no new business ready to be read uh, at this meeting. I do anticipate uh, <clears throat> additional new business coming down from the attorney's office during the remainder of this week, and I would encourage all of you to uh, go online and look at the agenda, which is published on Friday, uh, to find out what new business has been referred uh, to our committees uh, for their review and discussion beginning next Tuesday, the 22nd, at 9 o'clock a.m. in the committee meeting room imme immediately behind us. Um, so again, check for the agenda when it comes out on Friday afternoon. Uh, that now brings us to the uh, public comments on non-agenda uh, items, uh, and I understand there are several people that want to talk to us uh, tonight uh, about uh, uh, several things. Uh, first, uh, Mr. Chet Novak is here and wants to talk to us about blight. Mr. Novak, thank you very much for being here. You're recognized for five minutes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, commissioners. You know, I come to talk business when I bring my glasses and a piece of paper. Uh, a couple things before I get started on my agenda, I'd like to make a comment uh, about a couple of items that occurred with the commissioners last week. First of all, I want to thank those of you that stayed here for the entire meeting. I was terribly uh, disrespected. I think the rest of us were also when more than half the members left before the meeting was adjourned. I don't believe that that's the proper thing for members of the commission to do. Secondly, I was reprimanded in a very nice way for not being polite when I stand up here and talk. And I'll have to start by saying this. First of all, I am not a politician. I've always worked in private industry where we get things accomplished efficiently, without waste, or we get fired or not paid or never hired again, unlike elected officials. I get irked when I see my money and yours mismanaged, and no, I won't be polite in my complaints. It is no longer a time when politicians can dictate the rules of politeness when this happens. As in the old movie, 1976 network for those of you who remember it and those who don't there's a famous line a man stands in a window and he yells out I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore he doesn't say it in a polite manner that's where I'm coming from on this <clears throat> I stand up here I'm not very well dressed and I'm going to address that right now I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself since I was not brought up in Macon I've only been here, it'll be five years this December. My education, I have a four years Bachelor of Science degree, Business Administration from the University of Connecticut. I have an accounting major and a computer science minor. I played the dress for success game. I worked at the Big Etna, Etna Life and Casualty in Hartford, Connecticut. And I wore my three-piece wool suits. I also 
I worked there as a project consultant. I had eight, cons eight, eight people working under me there. I owned my own business for 25 plus years, lost track. My own remodeling business in Connecticut. <clears throat> Back when I started, I used to design my own jobs. This was before engineers were even required to get in there and, and specify uh, the different specs for jobs. Specifications, safety factors, etc. I've testified in court as an expert witness twice and won both times for my clients. At the end of my career, I would only take on the toughest jobs that either no one could do or no one would do. In Florida, I moved to Florida, I was in Florida for about 11 years. I was a realtor, a mortgage broker. I owned a mortgage broker business. <coughs> From that position, I became project manager in downtown Fort Myers in one of the toughest positions that anybody in that position could handle. That was as a historic, commercial, multi-use, downtown rehab project. I did very well there. I had acquired that job by insisting that a 203K customer of mine, which I'm, is what I'm gonna be talking about when I get through this, uh, when I insisted he play by the rules, he that. ended up being- One minute. One minute, okay. He ended up being the co-owner of the company and hired me for that. Quickly, I've been a field manager, field damage manager for FEMA, home builder for Adams Homes, and I've bought and sold homes in every way that could be done by gurus. Now, 203K. 203K is a program that's promoted by FHA. It's a program where citizens can buy and rehab a home all with one government loan. It's not a grant. It's something you have to qualify for. You have to be qualified for with your bank. The house has to be qualified also to not be totally upside down, even though they'll allow you to go to 110% of re after repaired value. I'm not gonna say too much more since my time's getting cut off. I'll be back to give you part two next time, I guess. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Mr. Novak. Uh, appreciate your patience, appreciate you being here, sir. Uh, Mr. Wade Horton uh, called in, did it, Mr. Horton show up? Mr. Wade Horton? Okay. Uh, Mr. Glenn Carey? Mr. Carey wants to talk to us about river development. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for being here, Mr. Carey. You're recognized for five minutes, sir. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Board of Commissioners, for allowing me five minutes to speak. I also would like to thank everyone here seated behind me. I want to thank you for taking the time to take part in your civic duty. Everybody know that it takes money to make money, and everybody know making has no money. So when you're at rock bottom, you have to do some drastic things. Now, I'm bringing to you a very good idea that I know will work and come with a guarantee. When you travel around the state of Georgia and you see north, south, east, and west, cities doing great things with their rivers, you have to ask, why not make and build. We have the best location. We have a river. Yes, the river is at a very low level, but with the proper engineering, we can get it back up. With the proper meetings, with all the players involved, we can get it back up and have it down for recreational purposes. That's what the Army Corps Engineering does. There's a location I have in mind. I've done my homework. And that location is where 75 and 16 merge. Just above that merge point, just below Amberson Park, if you look over to the right, you see the river. And then you see a wide open field. I have attempted on several occasions to contact P and Z to find out 
how that land is zoned. I don't know how it is zoned. If I can get an answer from one of the commissioners today, I would love to get that answer because I think that is the perfect location for a project that will make Macon great again. And what project is that? We can put a five-star district there and what would be there, what will be in the five-star district? Well, we will have a very large entertainment slash social center, five-star, a five-star hotel that includes a five-star restaurant to start. That would be a great starting point. Now, if we can get that with full view from I-75, that will give us the advertisement that Macon has never ever had. Can someone tell me, has Macon ever had A plus advertisement for visitors to come? Well, there, that would be the advertisement that Macon has never ever had. Now, what else will be in this five star district? Five star security. You won't just come up in here and babe and behave any kind of way. Down the road, we could consider some other projects. Like what? Well, when the Music Hall of Fame was here in Macon, it floundered. Up in Atlanta, it's on life support. If we bring it back and put it on a five-star district under five-star governing board, I guarantee you it will flourish. Later on down the road, we can discuss one final thing, because I know this one will be the most contentious, placing a casino on the river. This idea is a guarantee. Why? Because in time, it will pay for itself. This will be the answer that Macon needs, the shot in the arm. I hope I can get further conversations with some members from this great commission. Thank you kindly. Uh, thank you very much. Appreciate you being here and appreciate your patience. Next, Mr. Frank Lumpkin uh, wants to talk to us about uh, Interstate 14. <clears throat> Mr. Lumpkin, <clears throat> thank you for being here. You're recognized for five minutes, sir. Mayor, Commission, uh, Macon Citizens. My name is Frank Lumpkin, um, and though I'm not from Macon, I'm proud to be from Georgia, born and raised. When I began researching Interstate 14, I found out the, it, the potential it had to transform my hometown of Columbus, Georgia. But then I realized, why stop at Columbus? This is Georgia's interstate, Interstate 14, Macon's interstate. So a little history on Interstate 14. Well. When it completely built, it will begin in West Texas and end in Augusta, Georgia. In Georgia, it will follow along, most likely it will follow along the Fall Line Freeway. Um, the first portion was built just two years ago in Texas, and the entire Texas portion is congressionally designated, as well as parts of the Louisiana and uh, Mississippi portions. Little to nothing has been done, though, in the Georgia and Alabama portions, except from the work that my group has done by giving presentations to uh, city councils and the Georgia Department of Transportation. Um, because of this uh, not having this interstate, many parts of the South lack vital connection that the interstate will provide. Now, why should you care about Interstate 14? Well, I break it into three simple reasons, and those are listed on the fact sheets that I handed to all of you. That's interstate connection, strategic military impact, and enhanced economic development. So when we're talking about interstate connection, we're talking about connecting places. We're talking about connecting forts. We're talking about connecting ports, talking about connecting major cities, um, as well as U.S. state and interstate highways to one another. In fact, Interstate 14 will connect 14 uh, interstate highways to one another, as well as with another a number of U.S. and state highways. What this does is this creates major crossroads. And though Macon do is already a major crossroads, this would be a major east-west connector. And though Macon has I-16, which does take it to the east, this would be east and west and you know, east to another direction, which would um, you know, attract lots of businesses to the Macon area. I want to talk a little bit about the strategic military impact 
um, and what it would have on the Robbins Air Force Base, which, as you know, is a huge, uh, maybe even Macon's largest employer in the region. Um, because of this uh, military connection, the uh, military bases are able to rapidly deploy as well as um, enhance training at the bases because men and women are able to be transported from base to base easier. Um, a little bit on enhanced economic development. A nickname for Interstate 14 is the 14th Amendment Highway. Uh, if you remember from your civics class, the 14th Amendment is the Equal Protections Clause, which provides equal um, rights for all citizens living in the United States. What this interstate would do is provide equal opportunity for all citizens living in the South. This is some of the poorest region. And as you look at that red map, as well as the map of uh, the Georgia median income by county, you'll notice that the places that Interstate 14 go through are the poorest in the United States. What this interstate will do is provide opportunity be, uh, with better business. And better business is not just good for the very poor, but it's good, good for the very rich and everybody in between. The sorts of businesses that will be attracted towards those regions are travel-related businesses, which will be benefited by the influx of consumer, manufacturing businesses that will be benefited by being located on the interstate and being able to get their products to market quicker, the agricultural business, which is huge in the south, where they can get their perishables to market quicker, as well as for migrant farm labor to travel from farm to farm easier during harvest, and construction firms, which will be building and uh, maintenance of the interstate. So right now is important for this to be done. This is because infrastructure is a hot topic right now. With our current administ administration pledging to spend $500 billion to $1 trillion on infrastructure, if a little bit of this money was dedicated towards this interstate, then much could be done. And, little fact, a lot of that money is going to be designated uh, to the Texas, Louisiana, and Mississippi portions because of the Congressional Caucus that is formed um, from senators and U.S. representatives from exclusively those three states. Now, uh, also, most of the physical work is already done on this interstate. In Georgia, take for example, the Fall Line Freeway. That is four-lane divided highway that is already built. That is Interstate 14. We're not building a new road. We're just taking what's already there, upgrading it to Interstate Standards, and designating parts that are already up to Interstate Standards as Interstate 14. In Columbus, we have Jerry Allen Parkway. In Macon, one of the alternatives could follow 75 and 16 through the major uh, part of the city. Those portions of road are already built to interstate. We could put signs on those and call it Interstate 14 right now. There's nothing holding us back. Also, parts of this interstate, uh, uh, being the Fall Line Freeway, are located along High Priority Corridor 6, which does go through Georgia. What this, okay, uh, I'll wrap it up. But one thing I do want to ask council is um, to create a resolution advocating for the support of I-14 through Georgia. I already have a, uh, a basically one written out for you, so all I'll need is your signatures, and I mean, it really, there's no loss in you doing that. Thank you so much, Commission, Mayor, and Macon for having me here tonight. Thank, Thank you. you. Very Let's much, make I-14 a reality. Pre appreciate your information and appreciate your enthusiasm. Uh, next, Mr. Donald Richardson, got some grassroots reflections. Very good, very good. Mr. Richardson, thank you for being here. You're recognized for five minutes, sir. Now, this is under my voice, okay. As I've mentioned that my mother's family was the direct line from General McIntosh, which was the Native American chief who was half Scottish and half Creek Indian. And they always told me to keep them alive because we were the last that was left of his tribe around Butts County, Pike County, and Spalding County, okay. We were brought into the Methodist Church, but at the same time in our home, the women in my family kept the Native American religion alive so we'd be able to survive in both worlds like our chief, Chief McIntosh, mother was from the wind cloud clan so so i'm looking out for them and i'm saying this prayer that i used to watch my aunts and stuff do in the house okay it's psalm 77 
I cried unto God with my voice, even to God with my voice, and he gave ear unto me. In the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. My sore ran in the night and ceased not. My soul refused to be comforted. I remembered God and was troubled. I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed, Selah. Thou holdest mine eyes waking and I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I have considered the days of old in the years of ancient times. I call to remember my song in the night. I commune with my own heart, and my spirit made diligent search. Will the Lord cast off forever? Will he be favorable no more? Is his mercy clean gone forever? Does his promise fail forevermore? Hath God forgotten to be gracious? Hath he in anger shut up his tender mercy, Selah? And I said, this is my infirmity, but I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. And I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I remember thy wonders of old. I will meditate also of all thy work and talk of thy doings. And thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary who is so great a God as our God. And thou art the God that doest wonders and thou hast declared thy strength among the people. Now my Aunt Gertie told me that the breath, this is the same breath that came from that great, great ancestor, the spirit. And the reason why we were able to stay here is because of the fact that some of us contracted ourselves to certain Scottish immigrants my great-great-grandfather was a free man of color. He was not a slave, but he was allowed to have his own farm, just like any other white person. And then when freedom came in 1868, he got his full citizenship and his Scottish master transferred the profit over. So we were already set up. We were farm owners and that sort of thing, but there are some things that happened later on. So I was always told that whenever we go through these ch changes, not to be flipped out, this is what we're going to be able to stay here. Okay, because you know, the government of truth and all that, because the Native American Creeks was the tie between the whites and the black here. That's what we have. Some of us are like mulattoes, but that common ground. So some people said that we don't need to, we need to push out. No, you don't need to push the Native Americans out because it's in our blood. They are the common tie and in the amount. And we're near the millennium, and that millennium is coming around. I think you know. Thank you very much, Mr. Richardson. We appreciate you being here. Appreciate your grassroots reflections. Thank you. Uh, finally, Ms. Linda K. Uh, Nally uh, wants to talk to us about the 2019 uh, budget. One <coughs> other quick matter. Ma'am? One other quick matter. I, um, you pull, pull the microphone down so we can hear you, please, ma'am. I reviewed the 51 pages of the proposed county budget for 2019 posted online and have identified some draconian cuts that I think are in order and I'm working on a spreadsheet to present to the commission and ask that you consider with all earnesty those draconian cuts and therefore do not increase the tax rate by three mills. Secondly, Mayor Reichert, I believe you were informed by Georgia Department of Transportation Highway Right-of-Way Administrator Troy Byers that he directed me to contact the locals regarding the five hardship advance petitions I have filed regarding the purchase of our two parcels at 1361 Bass Road and 1363 Bass Road that have been drastically impacted and stigmatized for more than 15 years by a 50-foot right-of-way setback that goes through the center of both of our tax parcels and our dwelling, rendering those tax parcels and our dwelling unmarketable. And the county and GDOT need to step up 
immediately and purchase those parcels to accommodate the widening and realignment of Bass Road. Would you have someone from your office or from the Board of Commission contact me in that regard, please? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Uh, Natalie. We, we appreciate you being here, appreciate your comments. Um, there, there are no others that have signed up um, uh, for uh, to speak to us about a non-agenda item. I don't see any points of personal privilege requested. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Without objection, we are adjourned. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.